as we get closer to the end of this world, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming soon. And we as Seventh-day Adventists, we, you know, we, we need to prepare the word, like the John the Baptist, for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so one of the things that God has given us is for us to share the prophecy with the people. So this month, we will have what they call Prophecy Conference. You can put it on board. And it's going to be an online prophecy program. You know, and our goal is that you will invite your friends and people for them to learn. It's going to be, it's going to be an online thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can invite people. It will have a Zoom number. People can go on Zoom and participate in the prophecy thing. Can we just put it on the board, please? You know. Just put what you have there. So, uh, what, what I want you, by the end of this service, everybody will get an image of it. I want you to go out and send it to at least 10 of your friends. 10 of your friends and invite them. They just need to participate. They need to know what is happening. The theme is coronavirus, a preparation for the one word government. Is that it? Coronavirus, a preparation for the one word government. For the new world order. Thank you. Pressure for the new world order. Coronavirus, preparation for the new world order. You need to, you need to partake out of that and listen to that. And the Lord is going to bless us in Jesus' name. The Lord is going to bless us in Jesus' name. A preparation for the new world order, coronavirus. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are seeing now is a preparation for what is coming. And that's why it's important for you to be in church. If you can't be in church now that we are doing preparation, well, how would you be in church? The Bible says, they that appear to me, they, they go from strength to strength, they that appear before me in Zion. Appear before me in Zion. This is Zion. Some people have not been in church for one year. No, that's not right. Let me tell you, if God can't keep you, nobody else can keep you. They that appear before me in Zion, they go from strength to what? To strength. So you've got to, you've got to be ready for God. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming soon. It might be closer than what you think. How close are we to the end of the world? These are the things we need to know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's get ready. Let's get ourselves ready for what God wants to do. Amen. This morning, let's quickly go. Our time is fast spent. Let's go into the word and see what God wants to do. You know. Holy Spirit, teach us from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Some years ago, I had an encounter that stood strong in my mind. You know, I had, I had an encounter that stood strong in my mind. I, uh, my friend and I, uh, no, sorry, my wife and I went to see one of my very close friends that we grew up together. You know, this is coronavirus, that's it, a preparation for the new world order. So online Bible friends. So they're going to give it to you on the WhatsApp group. So you're going to send it to 10 of your friends today before we finish this service. Not now, not during the service, but really we'll finish while we are. And after the service, we are going to go out and witness, you know, and invite people. We said that last week. So let's get ready. Anyway, let me go back to my story. We went to Canada to see a friend of mine, one of my friends that we grew up together, you know. And we went to his subdivision where he lives, you know. And it was a very nice place. The houses were very unique, you know, and I was very impressed. You know, I like real estate, so I like to explore. So I said, wow, these your houses are very nice. How, how, did you get, how did you get them? You know, he said, oh, you know, he said, Pastor Buki, you don't know. Do you know one thing? In this, our neighborhood, people build their house by themselves. I said, wow. People build their houses by themselves? I said, I, I, I've never seen that because what I'm used to abroad is that people buy houses. So this man said, people buy you the houses by themselves. I said, so how do they do it? He says, yeah, you buy the land. So they sell, they, they sell you the land and then you, you, you get involved in building the house. You get uh, people to work with you. I said, wow, I would love to see that. I've never seen that in, um, abroad. So he said, okay. So we went exploring the neighborhood. The third lot from him, the plot or lot, they call it, from him, they were building it. So I said, oh, he said, look at this one. They are building it. I said, Just, it's owned by, by a couple, a bit elderly couple. And they are building by themselves. I said, wow, I'd like to see. So we, we got there, but 
It looks as if they were going to do some, a lot of concrete casting, which you call decking and stuff. So I, I was interested. I said, so what? And he said, yeah, the way it looks, it looks as if tomorrow they're going to do this thing because they are preparing the place. So would you come and... I said, yes, I would like to see how they do it by themselves, you know. So, so in the morning, I woke up early to pray. I was working, and I was going to watch when those couple would come and start doing that thing. You know, they were going to do casting, decking. You know, in Nigeria, when they want to do that now, you start hearing noise early in the morning. About 20 or 30 people will be on site carrying concrete, throwing things, goes, hey, so babe, bye, bye, bye. You know, it, it be, so I was expecting to hear the noise. I didn't hear anything. So I went back in there. So about 30 or 40 minutes later, my friend called me and said, they have come home. I said, ah, but are you sure? I said, yeah, they have come on the site. So when I got to the site, when I opened the window, I saw, I just saw a car drove in with a man with two women. I said, ah, this one can't be the one who wants to do the concrete. You know, if you want to do concrete, they must everybody with a bad, strong thing. You know what I mean? So, so I, I thought this man can't be the one. I, a man came with two men and they were going to do concrete. And so I was there. Today, now today I will see. So the, not very soon, so I just came out. I was watching them. They were, they were removing some things, putting some things. Then suddenly a truck came. Truck with a big, a big truck came. Had a big uh, thing at the back. Was rolling. Brrr, was a concrete mixer. And the man came. And when the man came, he started to torch out something, a long tube, and began to pour the concrete. You know, and it was the woman that was putting the concrete. He just helped to spread it. Helped to spread it. And less than one hour, they had finished the whole casting, the whole decking, you know. And I was opening my mouth saying, ah, this is technology. You know, it is, not, it is not by force. You know, and I was saying, ah, if it's Lagos like this, you know, somebody wants to do this kind of thing. You have about 40 people. Where is architect Amao? You know what I'm talking about. You have about 40 people. They have been on site, you know, and then they'll be carrying the thing. And then everybody will be hey, boss, hey, brah, zah, zah, zah. They, and they do it for money till night. Ah! Sometimes they go to the next day. And this was done with one hour. It was a technology advantage. <laughs> you know, technology advantage. I saw that when you use, when you take advantage of technology, you find that you, life becomes easier, faster, better, and stronger. You know, I said, wow, this, we should do something. I remember several years, I remember reading the story of Israel. When Israel was going to become a nation, Israel said to themselves, they, when the United nation agreed that they should be put in a state, they should start the Israeli state, nation, they were put, United Nations didn't want them to survive because they wanted to put a small nation among five to six <clears throat> Arab nations. And those people are their enemies. Five to six Arab nations were, and they, the place they gave them was in their center. So Israel was border, every border of which there was no friend. And the Arabs does not want them. So they knew one day, the Israeli began to think, they knew one day, they, all these Arabs would gather together to fight them. So they began to say, how do we prepare so that in case they gather together, what do we do? They said, there is, there is no amount of army they want to raise that could match the army those people want to do. So they sat down and said, we will not fight them on the land. We will fight them in the air. They are still using a lot of hand, a use of techniques. We are going to take, we are going to use technology to fight them. Technology advantage. They said, we will fight them with the, so they raised up the air force and pure technology. They said, we will invest in technology. And so you know what happened? As they predicted, some years after, the Israeli, I mean, I mean, someday, all the Arabs nation get out together. They wanted to destroy them. But Israel was prepared. Why those people were using Grand Army, green this one, Israel was in the hair, using technology. So they took technology advantage and they dis And within one week, that war was over because they won. Hallelujah. Everybody say technology advantage. You see, when you take advantage of the advantage, you are moved to the next level. Hallelujah. So, you see, technology advantage is here. And, I, and, I, and I, I, while, while, while we're saying that, you know, 
Why, why, why are we saying that? I remember God was saying to us, in the book of Luke chapter 16, there's a story there, you know. There's, there's a story there that is very pathetic, you know. And I want you to take note of that story. The story of the rich man and Lazarus. I know we always talk about that story. There was a rich man sat in verse 19 who had, who had clothed in purple, filing and feared sumptuously every day. There was a beggar named Lazarus. He had sauce all over his body, designed to be fed with crumbs from, from the rich man's table. But the dogs came. I mean, this man, he, he was eating crumbs. Dogs were licking his sore. So verse 22 says, the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was carried. And, and then to, to, to L, the rich man went to L. So we lost the rich man. <laughs> so being in torment in hell, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in the womb. Then he cried, Father Abraham, deep you have, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to me, deep his water and cool my tongue for I am being tormented in the flame. Ladies and gentlemen, hell is real. Don't go there. Hell is not created for you. It was created for the devil and his angel. But people walk on this earth and thought that, heaven, that hell is, is not real. I'm telling you this morning, if you're here, if you have not given your life to Christ, you should because hell is real. This man is just being tormented in hell. And he, 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 he was comforted. I mean, he says, Abraham said, I'm sorry, there's a big gap. There's a gift gulf between us. People can't pass from here to hell. So, what do I do? Then he said, so he says, look, he, the man said, the pain is much. It's a pain of regret. He has enjoyed the life. Most people thought they are enjoying life. Hell is real. And then he said, I beg you, Father Abraham, please help me send someone to my father's house. For I have five brothers that they may testify, that they may witness to them, lest they come also to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophet, let them hear. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if one of them goes from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, they do not hear Moses. The prophet, neither will they be persuaded, though one of them, though one rise from the dead. This is a real, this is, this story, I know is an allegory, but it's, Jesus was trying to teach something. He says, the man said, please help me send someone from heaven to rise from the dead and tell them that hell is real. Hell is real. Hell is real. Don't, so that they, they will not come to hell. Like, like, so Abraham said, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. We don't, we can't. but he says, he says they have the prophets. They have, they, have, they have the teachers. They have pastors. They have people who are preaching to them. I'm going to come back there later as I close. He says, they have people who go to teach them, to tell them. And he says, no, they won't listen. They will not listen to those people. But if somebody rises from the dead, they will listen. And Abraham said, no. If they don't listen, to the, if they don't take advantage of the opportunities that they have now, there's nothing I can do about it. I remember Helen White says, we'll not only be judged by, by what happened to us, but also by, by, the, by, the, by the opportunities that we have that we don't use. So he says, the, he says, the pastors just already put opportunities. If they don't take advantage of what they have put on ground for them, he says, there's nothing I can do for them. You know, as we get closer, I mean, when you don't take advantage of what God has put in place, you miss it. You know, you miss it, you miss it. I was, I was at the conference yesterday, I was sharing the story of, 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 of a couple, a family that was, I mean, they, I think they were in the, in the Caribbean as well. They were, they, they were believing God for a way to escape to America, USA. I mean, they want, they want to get a visa to Canada. I mean, sorry, to US. So eventually they got the visa, they were excited, but they didn't have money to fly all the family. So they said they were going to go by a cruise boat. They said to go to buy a cruise boat. So they went by a cruise boat. So when they got, so when they got to the boat, they were so excited. They said, eventually, oh, we can't wait to get into New York, to get to America. That's where our breakthrough is. We would enjoy the place. Oh, yes, that's, we cannot wait. We cannot wait. So they exist, but we don't have any money. They sold all they had, and they used to buy tickets. And after they had bought the tickets, they had nothing. So all they do is they said, we'll just eat crackers, biscuits, and butter, and cheese. So they brought a lot of that and put it. So when they got to the cruise boat, the day they were going to sail, they gave them a ticket and everything. They got into their room. And so they, they, they just go out, play. Every morning afternoon they reach, they have a banquet, big banquet, dinner, great dinner in the, in the boat, in the cruise boat. They ring the bell, say, come and eat, everybody should come. They say, ah, we don't have money for this, though. 
So they call their children quickly. They go into their room, lock the door, and they eat their crackers, their biscuits, and drink water on it. They say, don't worry, it's just a four or five days journey. In five days, we'll be in New York. So they, when, they, when the bell ring, ring, brown. Instead of going to the dining hall, instead of going to the restaurant to eat, they go in there and eat crackers, biscuits, butter, a little bit of cheese, and they drink water, and they go to their room. So they did that for four days. So, and then they go out. They, they see people going to the, to, to the dancing hall, people going to the swimming pool, people going to different places enjoying. They say, we don't have money for that place. All we paid for is the space. So they just stay in their space. So, the last night, when they were going to sail into New York that day, in the morning, they were going to enter. So the captain of the ship now said, came to them and said, I'm sorry, I, I know, I don't know, I want to ask what we did to you people that you did not join us at all throughout this five days journey. We saw that anytime they come, your space, your space, the restaurant, your space is left open. We don't come there. He says, you don't, you did not, is it that our food is bad? Or oh, this and this and that. The now I said, no, Captain, your food is not bad. The problem is that we didn't have any money. We didn't, oh, the Captain said, money for what? It was paid for. He said, it was paid for. It has been paid for. The Captain said, so we didn't know. He said, you, since you have a ticket on the ship, everything has been paid for. He said, oh, so did you read the fine print? Says we get says, yeah, we got a ticket, but they gave you a paper. So you didn't read the fine print. No, we did not. So we did not read read. No, it says it's all written there. You did not read it. So they missed it. They didn't, I mean, they missed everything because ignorance. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest enemy of the church is not Satan. The greatest enemy of the church is not demons. The greatest enemy of the church is ignorance. Hey, I said that again. Your enemy is not my people perish because they lack what? Knowledge. Now, this family had the opportunity to enjoy the whole thing. So we missed all this because we didn't read the fine prints. They were ignorant. I mean, ignorance, the word ignorance also means the word, same word translate darkness in Hebrew. It's the same word. Ignorance and darkness are the same word. And that is the same, I mean, Jesus, Satan is the prince of darkness. That means the kingdom of Satan, kingdom exists on darkness, which means it exists on ignorance. The kingdom of Satan thrives in ignorance. Jesus is the, is, 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 is the son of light, the kingdom of light. The same word light and knowledge is the same word in Hebrew, Hebrew light and knowledge. And so the, the kingdom of God operates, actually thrives in what? In knowledge. Those people, they were there for five days. They could have enjoyed every benefit on that thing, but they did not. They didn't take advantage of it because they were ignorant. And I tell you that the greatest enemy of the church is ignorant. When you don't know what belongs to you. When you don't know what belongs to you. You're ignorant. So Satan's strategy is to keep us in darkness of what belongs to us. And I'm telling us today, your light, somebody's eyes shall be open in Jesus' name. We shall not thrive in ignorance in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus, when he was about to leave, he told them, he says, I'm going to send you John 14. He said, I'm going to, if you love me, keep my commandment. Verse John 14, 16. And I'll pray the Father that I will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, but neither can you see him or know him, but you shall know him. So, so he said, I'm going to, last week we talk about helper. We talk about help from above. Jesus knows that we need help. So he said, I'm going to send you another helper. Now, who was the first helper? I mean, that word in, in Greek says, Alos Parakelos. I mean, Jesus was their helper. When you go to John 16, he was telling them, he said, in, the, in verse 5, but now I go away. Let me go to 7, straight, straight to verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convey the word of sin, of righteousness. And I'll, because he did not believe in me. What are we saying here? Jesus said, and now Peter couldn't understand that. Because Jesus was everything to them. When they were hungry, he fed them. When they were tired, he gave them strength. When they were sick, he healed them. When they were confused, he gave them direction. When they needed protection, he gave them protection. So it was everything. I mean, what can be better than Jesus? Nothing can be better than Jesus. Jesus was all to them. So, but ladies and gentlemen, something happened here. Jesus said, 
it is better. It is to your advantage that I go away. Something better than Jesus. Something better than me is coming. It's to your advantage. He says that I go away. I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. Now, if I do not go away, I mean, the helper will not come. That word helper also means comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby. So I'm going to send him to you. So he says, I will send you another helper. Hallelujah. How many of us need help here? Hallelujah. That's why I said, as a child of God, you can never be helpless. Because before Jesus left, he sent us what? The helper. He's the helper. He, he, he sent us the Holy Spirit. He says, that's why he introduced the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Ladies and gentlemen, a child of God can never be in a helpless situation. Because the helper is always around. He says, I'm going to send you another helper. He was their helper before. It was, what you back, oh, Lord, it was the one helping them. Now, he says, I'm going to say, I know I'm going away. And I know you will need help. So, he says, I'm going to send you another helper. Now, he says, it is to your advantage that I what? That I go away. He says, I'm going to send you the advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost is the advantage. Hallelujah. It's our advantage over the world. Jesus knows we are in the world. He knows that Satan is attacking us. You know, Satan doesn't want us to strive. You know, Satan wants to destroy us. You know, Satan doesn't like you. He doesn't want you to, to succeed. So, he knows that you need supernatural help. So, Jesus said, look, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. No, I'm leaving. But I'm not, I'm not gone yet. I'm, not, I'm going to give you, so I'm going to send a helper to you who will give you advantage over the world. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit, everybody say Holy Spirit. Everybody wave your hand. Say Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. If anybody's not with me, their hand, you must be seen sleeping. But you're not sleeping times like this. Amen. Everybody wave your hand and say, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is our advantage for the world system. We, you see, we cannot beat the world system with our own strength. But the Holy Spirit has been saying, He says, I will send you, the, He says, I will send the advantage to you. And ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is our advantage. You see, He says, I will send the advantage. Is the advantage that we have over the world system. When technology advantage makes us to beat things, to rule over our enemies. So when we take up the Holy Ghost advantage, the kingdom advantage is the Holy Spirit. When we have it, it helps us to rule, to beat this world system. Hallelujah. But the sad thing is that a lot of Christians are not taking advantage of the advantage. So you are, the, the Holy Ghost said to me, says, you will live in disadvantage if you are not taking advantage of the advantage. You begin to live in disadvantage when you are not taking the advantage of what? Of the advantage. A lot of people are living, they don't live in advantage. They are not taking, they are, they are not taking advantage of the advantage. So we'll get to heaven. When they get to heaven, ah, Lord, heart was so poor. It is what happened to me. I just said, but I give you the Holy Ghost. I give you the advantage of the word. You didn't use it. They will be like that family. They were eating crackers. They were eating biscuits and butter. Why? They could have had dinner. Had a great time. The church is dying. The church is going down because we are missing the advantage. We are not taking the advantage of the advantage. Everybody say, take advantage of the advantage. When we don't take advantage of the advantage, we'll get to heaven. God is not going to send. I'm sending, I know you need help. I know you need supernatural help. I know, I know you need something to be, to, to be, I know you need to have an advantage over this generation. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you the advantage. And that advantage is what? It's the Holy Ghost. He's the helper. Hallelujah. Everyone say the helper. It's a seven, sevenfold, seven-sided advantage that we have. Ladies and gentlemen, say if I do not go away, the advantage will not come. The first thing, the first of it is that, is the, it's called what? The helper. Everyone say the helper. If you need help, the advantage is there. Hallelujah. The, he's a helper. Hallelujah. People say, oh, it's because I didn't go to school. That's why I didn't succeed. No, it's because you didn't take advantage. I was listening to this testimony of a man. He, was, he didn't go to school. He was a prisoner in the U.S. He, was, he didn't go to school. He was a prisoner. He already, so his record is bad. He went to prison. But inside the prison, he met Jesus Christ. And he kept on saying, now that I'm a Christian, what advantage do I have over? What advantage? And the man that led him to Christ said to him, said, look, the advantage is the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. He says, if you would develop a relationship with him, if you would fellowship with him, he will teach you to profit. This man began to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He took advantage. In five years after he left prison, we, we, he already had a record, so he couldn't get a job. In five years after he left prison, he became a millionaire. 
He shared his testimony. He said, look, this Rolls Royce, I'm the owner. This is my house. This is my room. Inside my room, there's a jacuzzi, jacuzzi. He didn't even know how to pronounce it very well, but he says, it doesn't matter, I'm the owner. Hallelujah. Five years. They asked him, what is the secret? He says, the whole, is the advantage, the Holy Spirit advantage. The same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I mean, when you struggle, I mean, God says, I'm giving you the advantage. He's the helper. Look at it. He's the helper. He's the helper. He's the comforter. Is the advocate. He advocates. He comforts us. He is a star, he's an intercessor. He's a counselor. He's a strengthener. He's, he's a standby. Hallelujah. The sevenfold advantage. I wish we could do all that. When you, when you go to leadership training school, we teach on the Holy Spirit. The advantage is your advantage over the world. How did Joseph, uh, Joseph was able to rule in the midst of his enemies. I mean, Joseph was put in the prison. But Joseph had, the, I mean, he had the advantage. I mean, when you, when you read the story in Genesis, you know, the Bible was saying, I mean, Pharaoh said, I mean, Pharaoh had the dream. There was nobody could do it. But Joseph knew about the advantage. The Holy Ghost. The, 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 the language of the Holy Spirit is visions and dreams. So this man had a dream. He didn't know how to, how to open it. You know. And he called in, he called in Joseph. And he, Joseph said in Matthew, sorry, Genesis 41. Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, look, it is not in me. God will give an answer to Pharaoh. So that God, that there is the Holy Ghost. He said, you saw the dream. And he says, these are the dreams of the Pharaoh I've seen. Then in verse, in, in, in verse, um, let me go to verse 33. Now therefore, Pharaoh said, let's, let's select a man. Select a man with a, a wise man and set him over the place. So let's select a man, a wise man, in whom the spirit of God is. So now, please, he says, someone who has what? The spirit of God. Nobody can be greater than you. He said so. He said because oh, he had the spirit of God in him. You go to verse 30. And Pharaoh said to his servant, can we find such a man, a man in whom is the spirit of God? The Pharaoh said to Joseph, in as much as God has shown you all this, there is no one designing as wise as you. You shall be ruler over my house. Because he took, Joseph took advantage of what? Of the advantage and he became a ruler. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions of the Holy Spirit. There's the power dimension and there's the wisdom dimension. And God has given the Holy Spirit to us. He took advantage of the advantage. If you look at the story of Daniel, Daniel and his wise men, the Bible says when you look at the, the, Daniel chapter 1, it says this is what we'll do. And the Bible says after that they were tested. Daniel was 10 times better than his brethren. Why? Because they took advantage of the advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, they took advantage of the advantage in Daniel chapter 5. Says, Daniel was 10 times better. You know, was, he was 10 times better than all his brethren. 10 times. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you are supposed to be 10 times better than your colleagues in the office. Hallelujah. You are supposed to be 10 times better than the people that you see. In the, in the people that goes around with you, you are supposed to be 10 times better than them. You know, in Daniel chapter 5, you know, he was talking about when the king had a dream. And they didn't know who was going to interpret. I mean, the, sorry, the, the, the king had a dream. Daniel interpreted the dream. He took advantage. They said, there's the spirit of God. It was what happened. And after that, the king promoted them. We are supposed to take advantage of our the advantage so we can rule in the midst of men. Is the helper. Is the advantage. The helper. We are supposed to rule. Use the helper to help us. You see, human being looks for help. But when God helps you, takes you higher. The helper of the helpless is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. It's not a wind. No, no, no. It's no. It's a person that you have a relationship with. And you take advantage of that to move forward. Look, when, and in Daniel chapter 5, the king, while they were drinking, the king saw a hand writing. A hand just showed and was writing many minutes. They came up on the wall. As the hand was going on the wall, the king became afraid. He couldn't interpret it. And then the queen said, there in verse 11, there's a man in this kingdom. He knew the spirit of the Holy God. And, is, and in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. Oh, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians. I mean, I mean, the wisdom that Daniel had was overruling the wisdom of the world. And as much as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting of dreams, solving riddles, explaining agents were found in Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel call, be called, he will give you the interpretation. Can you put in NIV or New International Translation, NLT? 
that verse, I mean, you look at verse 11 and 12. It says, Daniel chapter 5, that's what I was reading here. It says, New International Version, or King James, or, or, or sorry, or New NLT. There's a man in whom insight, look at it. A man was found, oh, I have insight, understanding, wisdom, like that of the gods. Your predecessor, the king, made him chief over. Verse 12 now, go to verse 12. He says, verse 12 now, can you put verse 12 there? This man, whom the king named Belshazzar has exceptional ability. Everyone say, exceptional ability. I can't hear you, say, exceptional ability. Say, I have exceptional ability. Say, I have divine knowledge and understanding. Say, I can interpret dreams, explain to solve, say, I can solve difficult problems. Some of you don't believe. Say, I can solve difficult problems. Say, the, say, in whom the Spirit of God is. That Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit. It gives you exceptional abilities. Everybody say, exceptional abilities. Say, it gives you, say, I'm filled with the divine knowledge and understanding. What you don't confess, you don't receive. Say, I'm filled with divine knowledge and understanding. Say, say I can solve difficult problems. The spirit of God inside you gives you an advantage about the world. That's what Daniel did here. He, had a, he, made, he took advantage of the advantage. Exceptional abilities. Wisdom. To solve difficult problems. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be heard and not tell in Jesus' name. When God says you will be heard, he means what he says. Because he has given you the advantage. David also took advantage of the advantage. He didn't lose a battle. David didn't lose any battle. He took advantage of what? Of the advantage. You know, David, I mean, he never lost a battle. He was say, Holy Spirit. I said, the Spirit of God gives him direction. I share with us sometimes because I said, I met, I mean, there was a man, multi-billionaire, rich, well, the man in dollars. He says, I've never lost any business deal. He says, why? He says, before I take any business deal, he says, I go and take consultation. The Bible says, he's a counselor. Everybody say counselor. He says, the man says, he's a counselor. The Holy Spirit will counsel him. He said, I will go there. I spent three, sometimes it takes three days when he speaks to me. I know. He says, if he says, go ahead, I go ahead. If he says, don't go ahead, I don't go ahead. Because I don't lose anything. Hallelujah. I, he, the man is taking advantage of what? Of the advantage. He says, the Holy Spirit. He says, I mean, he, 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 will, he will direct you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same Holy Spirit that Joseph had. Holy Spirit that Daniel had. Holy Spirit that David had. It's the same Holy Spirit. In fact, in the New Testament, we are better than because Bible says, Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to him without what? Without measure. I remember reading this story. I mean, when, when, you, when you go to the book of Isaiah chapter 11, let me quickly round up from there. Isaiah chapter 11. The Bible was talking about the dimension. Maybe we'll continue from there. Isaiah 11 verse 2, you know, was talking about the, 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 the advantage, 11 to The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Those are the sevenfold spirit, sevenfold dimension of the Holy Spirit. Now, most of the time when we talk about the Holy Spirit, many of us are thinking of power, power. But the Holy Spirit has two dimensions. There's the power dimension and there's the wisdom dimension. The power and the wisdom, they are both for your advantage. Power over witchcraft, over the enemies. It says, the Spirit of the Lord. But if you look at this, really, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Let's look at that. There are seven spirits, seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit. The first one, the Spirit of the Lord, has to do with power. The Spirit of wisdom, that has to do with wisdom. Understanding, wis understanding is wisdom. Spirit of counsel is wisdom. Spirit of might is power, making it two powers. Spirit of knowledge is wisdom. Those are four for wisdom. And of the fear of the Lord. That's the wisdom is what? Fear of the Lord is what? It's the beginning of wisdom. So out of the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit, five is wisdom, two is power. Five is wisdom, two is what? Power. So we have over-celebrated the minor at the expense of the major. It's power, power. The power dimension is good because you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But the wisdom, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. The first dimension, five of his dimension is wisdom. Hallelujah. And that's the advantage. You're supposed to take an advantage of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and rule in the midst of your enemies. Everybody say advantage. It doesn't matter. This man didn't go to school. I read the story of another plumber. I shared that story. He's a plumber. And the city had a plumbing problem. The city had a plumbing problem. And they looked for every engineer to solve this man. They couldn't. They've tried. It's going to cost them to water the water system of the city collapse. And so they said, it's going to cost them millions and millions of dollars to rebuild it back. You know, and it'll take some time. 
So somebody said there's a plumber that there's a man in the in, in, in downtown that knows about this that can that do exceptional work. So the, the city authority went to him and said, Cruz says, can you help us come and solve this problem? So, so they said, he said, yes. They said, do you know how to solve it? He said, yes. He said, what is it? He said, the Holy Spirit will tell me. And ladies and gentlemen, he went there, look at the system. He said, don't worry. He said, he said, the Holy Spirit will tell him how to solve it. So he looked at the whole system. He said he came to church. That's why we need to come to church. In the presence of God. He said he came to church. He was in church. He was worshiping. He said, as they were worshiping, suddenly the answer just showed up, flashed to him's mind. He said he just ran quickly, left the church. He said he left, he left church, he just ran quickly into his office. He started to make the drawings. And the wisdom of God flow. And he solved that problem. The only, the, the, the the, the, the city paid him over a million dollars. He solved that problem and saved the, saved the, saved the city maybe close to hundred million dollars, a lot of the millions of dollars. Became very wealthy. He didn't go to school. Is the advantage. We must begin to take, or we must begin to what? Take a charge. Take advantage of the advantage. Let me begin to close now. How do you think, in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, 3, few things. Proverbs 3, 5 says, how do you take health the advantage? How do you take charge? How do you take advantage of the advantage? The first thing is, the Bible says, in all, trust not in all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Say, acknowledge him. I can't hear you say, acknowledge him. The idea is, you've got to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Until you acknowledge him, he will not appear to you. You can't ignore him. Benny Hinn says, his life changed. When he began to put a chair beside him and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. He didn't say, but Holy Spirit, this is your chair. This is my chair. He says, good morning, Holy Spirit. You've got to acknowledge him. You've got to acknowledge him. The Holy Spirit is not, is not, is not here. He's not wind. He's not, uh, not a dove. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, you have to acknowledge. He's a person. He's a third person of the Godhead. Like Father, like Jesus. And the Holy Ghost is a person. He's God. You've got to acknowledge him. And then he shall direct your path. Until you acknowledge him, he will not direct your path. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. You see, you've got to acknowledge him. You've got to say, Holy Spirit, good morning. Holy, you see, until you ask him questions, he does not give an answer. He doesn't force. That's the grief, not the Holy Spirit. That's why his Bible says, I wish I had the time to tell you, illustrate the Holy Spirit. It says, it's like a dove. When you put a dove on your shoulder, how many of us have seen Jesus? I mean, they said the dove came upon him. And that dove stayed on his shoulder. It is easy to, when you, when you are walking with the dove on your shoulder, you know it's easy to, for the dove to fly away. If anything comes, group, it will fly away. That's why when you, when you carry the anointing, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. It says, let's see 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. There's a communion. There's a communion. Communion is fellowship. You've got to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Have a relationship. Build a relationship with him. And then you can take advantage. Holy Spirit, spend time in with him. You've got to spend time, build a relationship. If you go to put in NLT, you know, you've got to send, uh, put advantage, of, uh, was have communion with him. So when we have communion with him, you ask him questions, you speak to him, he speaks to you, you know, you, you've got to do something for the Holy Ghost so that you can take the advantage of the advantage. But the, the, it says, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, fellowship, intimacy with the Holy Ghost. When you begin to do that, you begin to speak. The church must begin to take advantage of what? Of the advantage. You know, Mike Mudok. How many of us have heard of Mike Mudok? Mike Mudok was, you know, was flying one day. And then in the plane, he collapsed. And blood was gushing out. And they had to rush him out. He was going to Toronto. He had to get him out. And they said, you are flying too much. When they got him, they said, you've been flying too much. You are spending more time in the air than on the land. And so they said, if you don't stop, you're going to die. So, he had to drive from Toronto back to his home in America on the on road. And so, Mike Mudok says he thought everything was finished for him. Because he doesn't have a church. The only way he gets income is to go from churches to churches organizing programs. So, he said he thought everything was over. So, uh, what am I going to do? You know, he said, I, I, I was just frustrated. I was saying, Lord, what will I do? So, now, for the, and he said he has to do that for the next six months. He couldn't fly. He was not fly for the next six months. So how am I going to make those schedule? So he had to cancel all the schedule. He said, but, so he decided, okay, that's the, I don't know what to do now. How am I going to make income? He decided, he said, every morning, he says, I'm going to fellowship with the Holy Spirit from nine to one. 
fellowship, 9 to 12, 1, every morning. So I went to the presence of the Holy Spirit, and I began to fellowship with him. So then I started it. I did it for first month, second month. So by the time, of the, by the time I was going to do third, the second month, third month, the Holy Spirit, says, Holy Spirit has given so much ideas that this idea, the first, I mean, it says, by the time he began to implant this idea, the idea, he didn't travel, but that idea made him four million U.S. dollars. He said, out of it which he was able to buy a airplane for himself, get his ministry, he said, four million, he said, no, he would never have met that if, on all the itinerary. He said, oh, so I've been living in this disadvantage. I could have spent more time with the Holy Ghost and then I could have taken the advantage. The advantage is available. It's available to us. We've got to take the advantage. Several years ago, I was working in a factory. Some of you have heard my testimony before. And then we had about 36 looms that was working for us to produce sack. Out of those 36, 18, 18 to almost 18, 20 of them were not working. And so it became an issue. How can you run a factory that it almost three almost more than half of the machines are not working? How are you going to make money? So we had a meeting and everything. And the Chinese that was running to us says, look, we made this machine. The only way to produce this machine is to go to, to China, order it back. And for each of those ones, to order the, the equipment for those ones will cost us $10,000 each on each loom. So I had to get an approval from the chairman. He says, this is what we need to do. $180,000 US dollars was what was given that we we're going to pay. You know, so the chairman approved. He says, okay, we'll buy it. But I asked him, how long is it going to say it's going to take six months for them to go to China, produce it, and bring it back? I said, oh, I'm not going to wait for That means the whole year is gone. So I said, Holy Spirit. So I began to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, what can we do? I know you have an idea. If they can do it in China, you can do it here. And I said, Holy Spirit, this thing, we can resolve this problem. To cut long story short, I told the Chinese that I have an idea. This is what I think we should do. I'll get some Nigerian engineers to come and walk and do this and do this. That is, no, it will never happen. It will destroy the engines. It will do this one. This and that. They did a lot of things. I said, okay, I'm going to write officially that I'm the one responsible for those engines that are destroyed. We did everything. But let me tell you something. Eventually, I began to look for engineers who would do it. I couldn't even get all the engineers I approved, they wouldn't do it. But I got one guy that went to technical college in Leisure. The guy came and he did. He was, he was ready to listen to what the Holy Spirit said. And then we did it. And then we produced it. What was supposed to cost us $10,000 cost us less than 8,000 naira each and all the machines were fixed with 8,000 naira each eight times this I mean we didn't have to spend only 80,000 US dollars because I took advantage of what? of the advantage this morning are you going to take advantage of the advantage as I close this is what the Holy Spirit said to me he says we are in the last days we are what? In the last days. And this is the season of the last days. This season is a season of what? It says, I will pour out my spirit of what? Upon all flesh. The purpose of the Holy Spirit, really, if you want to, if you want to enjoy the advantage of the advantage, why is this said in the Holy Spirit? He says, says said to them in Acts 1 8, for you shall receive what? Power. I thought the Holy Spirit. And you shall become what? Witnesses. So the advantage, for you to enjoy the advantage, you have to become what? A witness. When you begin to witness, you receive the Holy Spirit without what? Without measure. The Bible says, and the Lord gave the Holy Spirit to, jo- to Jesus because he had the Spirit without measure because he spoke the word of God. That's in John chapter 2. Go and read it. When you begin to speak the word of God, the Spirit will come. The advantage will come and you begin to function. How do you get to take out there? How do you get to take advantage of the advantage? By being a witness. Because the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit is to, is to make you a witness for God. So where you are walking, when you become a witness, find the Holy Spirit to be you can be the best doctor in Nigeria. Hallelujah. God will give it to you. The Holy Spirit will begin to give you advantage. So when you begin to witness, the season we have says, look at it. It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It says, your young men shall, shall see visions. And your old men shall what? Shall dream dreams. Because visions and dreams are what? Are the languages of what? Of the Holy Spirit. Those are the languages of the Holy Spirit. Visions and dreams. Joel chapter 2. I mean, put it on. Joel chapter 2. It says, your young men shall see visions. It says, shall come to pass. I'll pour my spirit. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. Verse 29. Thank you very much. Go to verse 29. Verse 29. And, I, and also men servant, servant, I will pour my spirit on those days. Verse 30. 
You know, God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in heavens and earth. Blood, fire, pillars of smoke. God wants to make you a wonder. Hallelujah. God wants to make you what? A wonder. I want to encourage us. Take advantage of the season. It's a season of the heart pouring. Let's rest upon our feet. Rest upon your feet. It's a season of what? Of the heart pouring. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God says, before Christ come, I will pour out my spirit. This is a season of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The number one way to take advantage of it is to be a witness. To go and begin. When you begin to save souls, God will begin to give you the Holy Spirit without measure. And then you begin to take advantage of what? Of the advantage. You beat the world. The world cannot match the Holy Spirit. God wants to make you a witness in your place of work. Go ahead and you'll see what happens. He wants to make you a witness wherever you live. He wants to make you want. He wants to, you to take advantage of what? Of the advantage. Are you here this morning? Maybe you've been wasting. You, you've been wasting the, the the opportunities that you have. When we get to heaven, some people go to heaven eating crackers. Go to heaven eating biscuit and cheese. But I pray you go to heaven, taking full advantage. And the greatest step for this season: take advantage of the season. God wants to finish this work in righteousness. And he needs people to pour his spirit upon so that they can go out and what? And be a witness and take advantage, you know, of the advantage. Remember, those who don't take advantage of the advantage, they what? They are in disadvantage. So what are you doing? Souls are dying. Going back. All head bows. Want to pray now. All head. Remember that parable that we started with? That man says, hell is real. Heaven is real. You are here this morning. You've not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Which one do you want to be part of? I want to open the door of the church. If you are here this morning, God did not prepare hell for you. All head bows, all eyes closed. Let's begin to talk to God and say, Lord, help me to take advantage of this opportunity. Don't let me die. Don't let don't, anybody, I mean, those who don't have Christ can die anytime. Satan can kill you anytime. You, know, you, are not, you are not saved without Christ. If you are here this morning and you need, you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. In one minute, I want you to give that life to Jesus so you can, because if you don't have, if you are not born again, you cannot take advantage of the Holy Spirit. It's not school that will make you succeed in life. No, 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 no. It, it can help, but the Holy Spirit can take you to any level in life. All head bows, all eyes closed. You are here this morning and say, Jesus, come into my heart. I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Up your right hand quickly. Let's pray. Let me pray with you. There's somebody here that needs to give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. I, I, I need you in my life. I just want to take advantage of the advantage. Anyone who wants to give you life, all head bow. Some of you are looking instead of praying. Pray that somebody beside you will give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for yourself. I say, Lord, help me to take advantage of this season. I want to have the Holy Spirit without measure. I want to take advantage of the advantage. There are two sets of people I'm calling. First, somebody who says, I want to give my life to Christ. Secondly, somebody wants to dedicate their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Says, Jesus, I know I've not been walking the way I'm supposed to walk. Now I want to have you in my life. If you're like that, please raise up your right hand wherever you are and let us pray. I'm closing the service now. If you're like that, raise up your hand wherever you are and let us pray. Thank you. Thank you. Says Jesus, come into my heart right now. I want you to come into my life. If you are there, up there, Please come down, come out and let us pray together. Quickly, one minute, one minute. You are here, you are listening to me. You know you are supposed to come out. Please come out quickly and let us pray with you. So I say, Jesus, come into my heart. Let's begin to pray and ask Jesus to come into our heart. Don't be ashamed. Just come forward. God wants to heal you. God wants to restore you. Take advantage. You know, if you don't have Jesus, you can't have the Holy Spirit. He's only for the, he says, he, leaves, he stays with you and he's in you. So I'm inviting you to come forward quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's all head bows, all eyes closed. Somebody else wants to come? Somebody wants, you want to rededicate your life? Please say, Jesus, I'm rededicating my life to you today. I don't want to live the way I'm living anymore. I, I don't want to get to everyone and realize that I could have taken advantage. At that time, it's too late. Let us pray. If you are coming out, God bless you. Come out. Somebody else, if you want to join them, anybody wants to join him? Just one more person. One more person. There's somebody here struggling. You are struggling. You don't want, you're not sure whether you want to come or you don't want to come. Come. Jesus wants you to give your life to him. Just one person. You are struggling. That person should come out quickly. All head bows. All There's somebody else who wants to dedicate their life. You know you have not been living right. You've been living in sin. You are here. You're living in sin. You've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence to our midst this morning. Please help us. Holy Spirit. I want you to, as you are praying, as I want to pray with you, just pray for yourself. I say, Lord, help me to take advantage of the advantage. 
Lord, more epithet advantage of the season we are in now. The season is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for those who will go out and witness and so that they can live on top of the world. Those of you that are outside, I want to give you a life or you're watching from home. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart right now. Give me a new heart and a new spirit. Today, I know I'm a sinner. Please, Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe he's the Son of God. He died for me. On the third day, he resurrected so I can be saved. Jesus, come into my heart now. Give me the gift of eternal life. I want you in my life now. Take over. Take control. And say with me also, Jesus, I rededicate my life to you now. Take over my life, Jesus, and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to me. There's somebody here. You are supposed to be out. You are not held, but you said that prayer sincerely from your heart. You said it when I'm saying it. Who is that person? Who is that person? You said that prayer, but you are not out. You said that prayer. God, just, I just want to pray because I want to pray with you. I'm calling the prayer. Who is that person? Where is the person? If that person is there, raise up your hand. Okay. Yeah. God bless you. Just come. 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 God bless you. Just come. 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 God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Where is that person? Yes. You said it. You are not out. Is there another person that did that prayer like that? You are not out, but you said that prayer from the bottom of your heart. You want to come and join them. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, I just want to thank you for those ones that you have brought by yourself. Lord, I pray that their lives will be totally dedicated to you in Jesus' name. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. You will not go back. You will not go down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, you will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Your name shall be written in the book of life. Thank you, Father. Perfect their salvation for them. Blessed be your name forever and ever. Because we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please follow, follow this man. Follow him. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we take advantage of the advantage. Hallelujah. Be seated. We are people and we love to get connected. We connect as families because of birth. We connect as friends because we click. And we connect as communities because we care. Seventh-day Adventists are people who connect in communities called congregations, which in turn connect to form conferences, who connect together to form unions, divisions, and the general conference. Why do we connect? It starts with a connection to the Creator who invites us on a spiritual journey. When we journey together, we can help each other along the way. This journey is a journey of a lifetime. And as we learn and grow, life becomes filled with meaning and purpose. Our greatest joy is in helping others along the way. Wherever you are on your journey, we believe that we have something to offer that can make your life more whole. So the next time you see a Seventh-day Adventist, remember, you're not looking at someone who stands alone. They are connected to a world church that has 17 million members gathered in 13 divisions comprised of 122 unions formed by 600 conferences serving in 140,000 congregations in 208 countries who worship in 924 languages and they all want to connect with you.